This is the Bingham Canyon Mine. Located southwest of Salt Lake City, Utah, it is the largest open pit mine in the world. In fact, the largest hole ever made by humans. I visited the mine in 2019 while stopping over in the Salt Lake City area during my chase of Big Boy 4014 from Cheyenne to Ogden and back. Being a fan of all spectacular forms of engineering, I had heard of the mine in the past, but was not actually aware that I would encounter it on this trip. When visiting the Natural History Museum of Utah with my girlfriend, we happened upon a balcony area which had major local sites labeled on the railing, one of which was the mine. The mine was so large that it was clearly visible from the museum, despite being more than 20 miles away, with the actual pit concealed behind a ridge from that angle. A quick bit of Googling informed me that the mine had just recently resumed tours for the first time since a landslide in 2013 destroyed the previous visitor's center. I was ecstatic and immediately booked a tour for the next day. The tour began with a 20-minute bus ride up to the visitor center, which is high up on the wall of the mine pit, though still several hundred feet from the top. Unfortunately, professional photography and video is forbidden, so to avoid being too conspicuous, I didn't bring my large microphone with its wind blocker, a decision I regret, as the pit was very windy. Part of the reason I decided to record voiceover for this video was to drown out the prevalent wind noise which was overpowering in my original recordings. The mine itself is so large it is difficult to comprehend its scale, even in person. It's more than three quarters of a mile deep, two and a half miles long, and covers nearly three square miles. Those little dump trucks you see at the bottom of the pit are a mix of 250 and 320 ton capacity Komatsu and Caterpillar models, with tires 12 feet tall and engines that would be at home in a locomotive. I believe the shovels are mostly P&H models, including at least one 4100 XPC, with a bucket around 70 cubic yards in capacity. They can load to the haul trucks in three to four passes. That dark line you see running across the middle of the pit is actually a double stacked wall of shipping containers. They're placed along the uphill side of the haul road to prevent rocks from falling onto the road and inhibiting the passage of the haul trucks. The trucks carry their load up the two mile haul road in about 30 minutes, ending at this 200,000 ton per day capacity rock crusher. If you look closely, you can see the conveyor exiting the bottom of the crusher on the lower left. This conveyor, which is around three miles long, carries the ore through a tunnel out of the mine for further processing. The conveyor system replaced a railway which used to serve this purpose in the late 80s, and while it is undoubtedly more efficient, I wish I could have seen that in operation. The general method by which the ore-bearing rock is mined involves drilling holes in the rock which are packed with explosives to blast it apart. The more manageable chunks that result are loaded into the haul trucks by the shovels. Unfortunately, we missed an opportunity to capture the blasting on video as they had just completed one about 10 minutes before we arrived at the visitor's center, and my understanding from what I heard while we were there is they only do blasting approximately every 2-3 to three hours. This close-up gives some idea of the size of the haul trucks. I believe this was actually one of the smaller 250-ton models, yet, as you can see, it dwarfs that crane and boom lift. Where? Uh, oh, up on the hill there? Up on the hill where they Oh, no, I didn't. There are shovels working. Here you can see I finally found a working shovel loading haul trucks. I believe the truck on the left is a smaller 250 ton, while the one on the right is a 320 ton capacity. You'll notice the second truck is already lined up, ready to be loaded. This type of operation is all about efficiency, and any time a shovel is not actively loading a truck, it is wasting money. These large shovels are actually powered by an electrical cable directly hooked into the power grid. I believe those yellow posts on the left lift the shovel's power cable above the road so the haul trucks won't drive over it. This oversized tractor trailer is based on one of the haul trucks, with a massive low boy trailer for moving tracked equipment around the mine more quickly. 
I believe that little dozer it's dwarfing is a D-10T, Caterpillar's second largest model weighing in around 95 tons. The first minerals were discovered in Bingham Canyon in 1848, and small-scale mining took place from 1863 through the 1890s, but large-scale mining didn't begin in earnest until around 1900. By 1912, it was considered to be the largest industrial mining complex in the world. Mining continued until 1985, when the mine was shut down due to rising costs. Up until this time, most haulage between the mine and the smelter was accomplished by rail. However, when Rio Tinto purchased the mine in 1989, they replaced the railroad with the conveyor system mentioned earlier. They also modernized the mill and the smelter, and the complex has been in continuous operation ever since. Hmm. Yeah, it looks like they have a couple of different kinds of trucks. This cable shovel at the bottom of the pit appears to be the P&H 4100 XPC. These are some of the largest shovels in the world and come equipped with buckets ranging from 69 to 82 cubic yards with a lifting capacity of 120 tons. That's enough to load most railroad hoppers in a single scoop. The passing pickup truck and school bus give a good sense of the scale of this machine. The landslide in 2013, which demolished the previous visitor's center, consisted of more than 2.3 billion cubic feet of rock and dirt, roughly five times the volume of the Boeing Everett plant, the largest building in the world. Fortunately, thanks to a radar system installed several years earlier, the mine was evacuated long before the slide took place and no one was injured. At this point, I will refrain from too many more comments and let you soak in the sights and sounds of this remarkable place. I have done my best to edit out as much of the wind noise as possible. Just, 
So how long a video you do?
thank you for joining me on this trip to Bingham Canyon Mine, the largest hole in the world.